Fail safe. Let's talk about what fail safe means and why it's so important to a secure design. One of the challenges that we'll run into in application development is to handle basically errors, exceptions, variables that might come up. So if there is an exception that's thrown, we want to make sure that it's addressed appropriately. And this is where fail safe and fail open, fail secure all come in. So let's talk about failsafe first. Basically, failsafe is really based on the idea that we want to minimize damage if the system fails. For example, how do we handle a transaction that is 70% completed and for some reason, right at the split second it was going to complete, it didn't exactly complete its closure. How do we handle that? Fail secure, though, is a little different. Basically, it blocks access when the system is not available, if it's not consistent, basically. When it comes to failsafe, for example, it's all about emitting parameters, perhaps, from a system call. How do we handle that? Do we allow files to be accessible to the right owner uh, in an appropriate manner? Another thing to think about, too, is really um, taking into consideration how the device or the system might handle something. It could be as well, not just a software issue. What about if there's a power outage or the network goes down? What about if we're having a highly available application and the heartbeat goes down? Do we still process those transactions? Fail secure, basically, if there is a failure, basically puts the system into a high level of security and even can disable it. So basically, how does this get handled? This is again a big deal from an application standpoint when it comes to like transaction processing. The program really needs to consider activities that will happen, for example, after that fail secure operation occurs. The option generally can be to remain in that fail secure state or perhaps even reboot the system. Whatever that option is, you need to address it. This is really where it comes down to what is typically known as exception management. How do we handle an exception in the output from an input perspective, whatever the variables we're looking at? And those variables, again, could, could very well be, do we allow access? Is it prioritizing security or is it prioritizing access? Is it prioritizing transactions? Whatever that prioritization might be, we need to consider how it will be handled. When it comes to fail open, this state is going to allow users to bypass failed security controls and essentially what this does is it veers on the side of permissiveness. For example, if there is an issue on your desktop, like we all know Windows, right? It can lock up just for the fun of it. And sometimes we need to be able to get out of that browser window or Outlook or whatever. And to do that, sometimes we may need to go to the performance monitor. And to do that, we have to do control alt delete so that we could terminate a process. It's all about leaving the right, basically, switches open, the right openings available, basically the functions to be executed when we want to execute them available. One thing to think about, for example, with fail open, we know that, of course, if there is a failure, it's not going to shut down the whole system. It should leave some options available. This strategy, generally, we'd want to, to really use, for example, with like authentication. Perhaps it could be like some kind of healthcare application, and we don't want to just lock someone out immediately. Um, if they're already authenticated, we may want to limit the access, for example. Again, it's all about understanding the risks. What about uh, a good example is what about if the power goes out and we have like electric doors or electronic magnetic doors? 
the magnet should release if the power goes out. And again, we don't want to lock people in if they have to get out, because if the power is out and somehow that is one of those magnets that's actually default uh, defaulted to lock um, when the power is out, then that could cause some issues. With that said, it's about how we handle specific functions, mechanisms, etc. Lastly, we really just want to consider the importance of addressing specific failures, whether it's a component software or an operation or a transaction, how do we handle the failure of that service, for example? It just comes down to how do we respond, how we build in that response. Is it a failed close, a failed open, failed secure? Just understanding what to apply when, is it about security, authentication, whatever that situation that you need to address in your development of that application, make sure it's clearly defined, documented, and of course, meets whatever objectives that you need to meet in your software project. Let's move on to the next module.